On October the 2nd, the Armenian-Azerbaijani war entered its fifth day. Forces of the Azerbaijani military, supported by Turkey, continued their attempts to capture the contested Nagorno-Karabakh region and to dismantle the self-proclaimed Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, which is overwhelmingly populated by Armenians. Intense artillery duels and Azerbaijani airstrikes are being reported across the entire front line in Karabakh and even near some parts of the Azerbaijani-Armenian border. Nonetheless, the main clashes still take place in the districts of Fizuli and Jabrail, where Azerbaijan have achieved their main gains, capturing several positions from the Armenians. The Azerbaijani artillery, together with Turkish-made and Israeli-made combat drones, played a key role in the tactical successes of Azerbaijan on the battlefield. On October the 1st, the Armenian military even claimed that four Azerbaijani combat drones entered Armenian airspace and three of them were shot down, allegedly by the S-300 system. Additionally, the Armenian Defense Ministry claimed that its forces had shot down three Azerbaijani fighter jets and two helicopters. The Ministry of Defense of Azerbaijan dismissed the Armenian claims, calling them complete nonsense and fake news. It insists that the Armenian side uses claims about attacks on its territory in an attempt to trigger the Collective Security Treaty Organization Pact and obtain direct military support from Russia in the conflict in Karabakh, which formally is not its territory. What is even more strange, despite the five days of open war, the Armenian leadership has still not started the process for the recognition of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic or the official integration of the region into Armenia. Therefore, it has no even theoretical legal grounds to request CSTO help in a conflict on its territory. Meanwhile, the UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, known for its anti-Assad and pro-militant stance in the Syrian conflict, reported that dozens of Turkish-backed Syrian militants had been killed, injured or gone missing while fighting against Armenian forces in Karabakh. According to the SOHR, 28 of them were killed and 62 others injured or went missing. The report alleges that at least 850 Turkish-backed Syrian militants were deployed there. It should be noted that according to Armenian estimates, their number is about 4,000. France and Russia also expressed their concern regarding the moving of militants to the region. In turn, Azerbaijani and Turkish media and officials insist that Armenia deploys members of Kurdish armed groups considered to be terrorists by Ankara to the combat zone. Nonetheless, these claims have not so far been supported by any evidence. The self-styled Neo-Ottoman Empire of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is on a full-scale propaganda offensive to instigate an Armenian-Azerbaijani war. On October the 1st, the United States, Russia and France released a joint statement condemning the violence in the Nagorno-Karabakh region, calling on the sides to accept a ceasefire and return to the negotiating table. In response, President Erdogan made a fierce statement, slamming the OSCE and claiming that Azerbaijan should continue its military push to capture the Nagorno-Karabakh region and thus the war with Armenia. I would like to declare that we are together with our brothers in Azerbaijan in their struggle for the liberation of their occupied land. The path to lasting peace in this region lies through the withdrawal of Armenia from all the spans of the Azerbaijani lands occupied by them, Erdogan said, addressing the Turkish parliament. Especially the so-called Minsk trio, America, Russia, France, and their seeking of a ceasefire in the face of this negative situation, which has been reflected these days because they have neglected this problem for nearly 30 years, is above all not acceptable, he added. In the best traditions of Turkish public diplomacy, Erdogan simultaneously accused Armenia of triggering the military escalation. Meanwhile, Turkish state media reported that during the recent phone call, Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu told his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov that Turkey sees no reason for a ceasefire in Karabakh for as long as the region remains in the hand of Armenian forces. Earlier, the Turkish leadership at the highest level declared that it is ready to provide any help, including military, to Baku. The Armenian side claims that Turkey is in fact participating in the war on the side of Azerbaijan.